Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy with another special guest. And then I mean special, I mean special guest on the gratitude podcast interview regarding the pandemic. My good friend, Rick Toms. And I was thinking as I was introducing Rick that if it wasn't for Rick, I wouldn't be at the Columbia Tower Club where I met an awful lot of people. And that's where uh, he took me initially and, and uh, we connected and been good buds ever since. So Rick, welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you, David, Mr. Gratitude Guy. You uh, bet. It's, you a, bet. It's, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. Always Mike. a pleasure to engage with you. Thank <laughs> you, sir. Likewise. And so I have a couple questions for you. And the whole sure. goal behind this, I told people I didn't really tell them the questions. I kind of wanted to have them be spontaneous. But I think my first question is, what has been your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic? Certainly, the, probably the biggest thing that's ever happened to any of us in our lifetime. But what has helped Rick the most? You know, that's, that's an excellent question, David. Um, I'm going to say um, gratitude. Yeah, and, and why I say that is because, and thanks to you, um, that uh, I've come to understand what gratitude really means mm -hmm. and what it means is being grateful. Right. You know, grateful for that I'm in good health. Um, grateful that um, I'm somewhat financially stable. Yep. Um, I've got a roof over my head. Yep. You know, I have uh, relationships, you know, um, and grateful to be at the age that I am and have witnessed the things I have in my life and uh, I'm grateful for the life that I live and have lived. Yeah. That's really great. So, and that's, that's appreciating that so much. That's really neat. And, you know, certainly this is an uncertain time. Again, for the age that you and I are, maybe the most in our lifetime that's ever happened and people that are younger too, it's such a big deal. But do you notice uh, what you're grateful for now? Has it changed versus say a month and a half ago, what you're grateful for now? Um, no and yes. Okay. Because what I've come to understand, and you talked, we talked about it earlier, is health is the most important thing. Yes. And without that, and if you don't believe that you're in good health, then you make yourself susceptible to whatever is out there. Right. And like you and like myself and other people, who believe and feel that they're in good health, you know, I don't fear uh, the coronavirus. Yeah. You know, I, I don't fear it you yeah. know, because I know consciously and subconsciously I'm in pretty good shape. Yeah. Yeah. And as I know you as well as I do, I think I know you pretty well, you've always been very motivated and, and uh, hmm. Uh, juggled a lot of balls and done a lot of things, always have a new plan going and whether it's Mexico or Africa or whatever it might be. But so with some people that maybe aren't quite that um, innovative or creative or whatever you'd like to call it, do you have any uh, sort of tips or thoughts or ideas for what people can do that are, that are kind of housebound and, and tied up in their houses and maybe wondering how they can be productive? Any thoughts or ideas around that? Um, good question, David. Uh, and yes. This is a time of reflection. Mm. There's no better time to reflect about your life because, see, this is going to come to an end. Right. Oh, well, yeah. This is going to end. Mm -hmm. And at the, at the day that it ends, what have you been doing to prepare yourself for what's next in your life? Mm -hmm. And that can be financially. That could be uh, job-wise, relationship-wise. Uh, Friend-wise, all those things that you have time to now, uh, you have the time to dwell on, you know, this is a time to start making some crucial decisions about your life. And yeah. if you, you know, uh, it, it's no better time because you can't do anything anyway. <laughs> no, that, Rick, that is, that is really good. And that's one of the reasons I'm enjoying doing these so much is because people are coming up with nuggets and gems and little morsels of information that are just so helpful. And that kind of answered another question I have is, and you just answered this, what are you going to do in the first hundred days after this is over to hit the ground running? And you just answered it and be prepared. Use this time now to plan that. So, cause it is going to end. That's the one thing we know that we don't know when it's going to end, but we do know one thing it's going to end. Yes, so when, we're, when we're back out in public and it's gone down and we've got the vaccine or whatever the different things are, 
So, um, but that's, yeah, that's really smart. And it just tells me how prepared you are. And that's always been part of what's gotten you where you are in life and being on top of things too. So, okay. so, so last question, do you have sort of a, a quote or a saying or a philosophy that kind of has directed you throughout your life? I mean, some people say this too shall pass, but has there been something you think that's always been kind of a hallmark or, or something that guides Rick? Um, uh, that's a good question, David. That's a very good question. And I was trying to think of a, uh, remember the uh, phrase from Billie Jean King, the tennis player. Uh -huh. And her quote was something like, um, failures are always afraid of losing. No, how is it? Failures are always afraid of losing. Winners are always, well, I can't quite quote it. Mm -hmm. But what she was making the distinction between is how winners think and how mm -hmm. losers think. Nice. nice. And I have, and you probably know this, I have a winning attitude. You bet. You know, I'm not afraid to take on a challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, it's because it's in the challenge, win or lose, yeah. is how you grow and how you learn. True. And if you're not willing to take on those challenges, no matter what they are, yeah. you know, despite what people say or think, you know, you're going to not succeed in some things. Yeah. That's just the way it is. Yeah. And it's in that that you learn a lot about yourself. Yeah. And you learn about what's next for you. Right. You know, you cannot, you cannot, the other thing I'll say is you cannot compare yourself to other people. That's true. You know, you're it. Yeah. The only person you can compare yourself to is you. I think that's you know? a great point. I was liking it too. It's like a cat chasing his tail. You'll never get anywhere, you know? No. So, so just, if you want to compare yourself to anybody, compare yourself to the guy in the mirror and try and there to you keep, go. keep getting better all the time. That's your phrase. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good that's one. True. I've said that that's a few a times. Very good one. That's well, a very good one. Thank you, my friend. As I, of course, didn't, well, I'm not surprised at all that there were some valuable nuggets after just a few decades on the planet and <laughs> how long we've been around and you and I have been around about the same time and so forth. So thank you so much for being part of the podcast. I really appreciate your wisdom and your comments. Those were great. So I, I, I extend, thank you, David, and I extend you an invitation that uh, let's do another one when I get to Mexico. Excellent. Well, I'd be happy to. Yeah. Yeah, we can do it from Mexico. Yeah. And then I'll be on the next plane. I'll be in the next plane the next day down to visit you. So have an extra bed ready. <laughs> Look forward to it. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, David. Uh-huh.